Fans of rock music know this image pretty well. This is Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album cover, released in 1973, and it shows white light passing through a prism. So the question we all have, of course, is what's going on? Now, if I shine a laser light through a prism, you can see some refraction happening. I'm going to put the normals in here, and you see we refract bending in on this first surface, surface, and when I come to the second surface, I refract bending out, so I get a double refraction. Now, if I change the color of the laser, what we're going to see is that the angles change a little bit. See how this out here is not the same? Okay, well, the reason we have this happening is that light doesn't actually travel at the exact same speed for all colors of light when it goes into the glass. Um, the interactions of high frequency light, like the violet and blue, is a little bit more. Remember the uh, resonant frequency of glass is in the ultraviolet range. So as we get closer to that, we have more interaction with the glass and it slows it down even more. So when we're out here at red, we bend. When we are in here at violet, we bend more. Okay, now if I switch this to white light, um, the cumulative effect of this is that the colors all pass through and spread out. We call this spreading out dispersion. A neat example of a dispersion is a rainbow. When you have your back to the sun and um, there is water in the air, it could be from rain or it could be from washing the car, um, you will see a rainbow. So how does a rainbow work? When sunlight hits a raindrop from above, you can see that the different colors, red and violet, enter into the raindrop and are reflected off the back wall and refracted back out. And the angle from the incoming sunlight is different for violet and red. For violet, it's 40 degrees. For red, it's 42 degrees. So you'd think that since the red light comes out on the bottom and the violet's on top from this raindrop here, that you would see the rainbow with violet on top and red on the bottom, but it doesn't actually work that way. Because if you think about the fact that the light has to get to your eye, every single drop can only show you one color. Okay, so this drop up here, the violet's going up over your head, but the red's coming to your eye. Lower drops, the violet, instead of going over your head, goes right into your eye, and that's what you see, and you won't see the red from this drop. So what actually happens is the red is on top in a rainbow, and the violet's down on the bottom. So all the water drops that are dispersing red into your eye form a cone, and all the ones that are dispersing violet into your eye form a smaller cone and if you look out that's what gives you this big arc of a rainbow now it's a full cone you just don't see all of it because uh, you're not in an elevation to see it so you would see it uh, if you were higher up as in this view from an airplane some of the light that enters the raindrop lower will be double reflected inside here and come out at a kind of a higher angle like this this actually can form a secondary rainbow, which we see as a double rainbow across the sky. Oh my God. When we first talked about refraction, we saw that when you go from a fast medium to a slow medium, the light bends in towards the normal. But when you go from a slow medium back out into a fast medium, it bends away from the normal like we see here. Up here I've got glass, down here I have air, and this angle is smaller than this angle. Now if I take and rotate this down, you're gonna see that that refracted angle is starting to approach the surface. Okay, we're gonna to get to a point right about here where it's just about touching the surface. Now what happens when we go beyond that? Well, when we get to that exact point where it does skim the surface here, it actually doesn't leave anymore. It's what we call totally internally reflected. And here we see a beam that is hitting the surface and staying inside the glass. If I take this and further change this angle, it still doesn't leave. So we have this angle right here that's the very first point where we see that happen. This angle is called the critical angle. And if you go past that, you still can't leave. Here we see the critical angle for glass. It's about 43 degrees. If I change this to water, I actually have to go to a larger angle before I get 
my total internal reflection, about 49 degrees. What this really means is that it's easier for light to escape water than it is for glass. And as the speed in the medium gets slower and slower, like we go from water to glass uh, and to other materials that have even slower speeds, it gets harder and harder for the light to escape. Diamond's a pretty amazing material. It slows down light so much that the critical angle is only 24.6 degrees. It's actually very hard for light to leave a diamond. You can see that when white light comes in, uh, between the refraction and reflection at all the different surfaces, you get quite a bit of dispersion. And this can make diamonds look very, very beautiful. Total internal reflection is exactly what the name implies. We're talking about 100% reflection. That's actually more efficient than mirrors. Mirrors only reflect about 90 to 95% of the light. A lot of optical instruments use prisms instead of mirrors for their reflection because it's, uh, it's more efficient and more light's transmitted and that's a good thing when you're designing optical instruments. An important application of total internal reflection in modern communications is the fiber optic cable. If you can see this picture over here, you can see light following through this cable. How is that happening? Uh, some people actually call these light pipes because a cable is like kind of like running water through a pipe. Um, but because of total internal reflection, if you don't bend it too far, the light can never actually escape and it just follows along. That does it for chapter 29. Thanks for joining me and enjoy your physics.